Hi everyone, my name is Kath Guthrie and today I'm going to give you a presentation about Sonic Pi. Sonic Pi is um, a software program built for the Raspberry Pi machine, which is a low-cost computer built by a, uh, an organization in the UK that wants to provide these computers to low-income um, people as well as children so that they can make coding accessible to everyone. Um, Sonic Pi specifically is a music coding app. So it can do, you can do things like compose your own music in it, just play around with frequencies, um, you can create your own loops, um, all sorts of really interesting cool stuff. One of the coolest features that I unfortunately will not be showing you today is uh, live coding. So as in you can live DJ a particular song. So you can run the code and while it's looping, you can change something and then restart the loop and the chords will change or something like that. So it's a really amazing program that has a lot, um, a lot of different features. So today I'm just gonna run you through some of the basics of how the program works. So on this first screen you see here, we've got, um, we're gonna examine playing notes and rests. Use BPM 200 is a setting for um, speed, so you're gonna see that on pretty much all the screens, and it's beats per minute. So play 64, sounds like this. Play is a function written as part of the program that just gives you a particular note. Now you can either use um, note numbers or you can also use note names if you are a trained musician and are more comfortable with that. So in the next example, we've got um, A3, which is, well, it's A3. <laughs> um, and you've also got sleep too. And sleep is an indication for the amount of rest or silence in between a note. It doesn't end up being so much Silence is kind of the gap in between notes. So you'll see what I mean when we play this. Nice. So that was a scale. But there are other things that you can do with it. Instead of having to write all of that stuff out, because if we want our code to be dry, we would know that that's a really, really long way to write something that could much easily be done with play pattern timed on a scale. This is going to show us a scale um, based on C3, and it's going to be a major scale with a little extra stuff on the side that I'll explain in a second. And it sounds like this. <laughs> Intense, but cool. So on the next page, we've got playing chords. Um, you see that the chords are contained within an array, very cool, using the play function again, which sounds like this. Very nice. You could also do the same thing with numbers. If we um, want to combine those all together, we can include it with sleeps. So we can use a BPM, and it sounds like this. That's a chord progression you're going to hear in the mystery song you will be hearing at the end of this presentation. <laughs> Aside from that, you can also use play pattern timed again on the chord with some extra stuff. Um, settings here that I'll explain later will, um, will change the timing of it. That sounds like this. Very cool. So uh, you can already see, it makes music very, very easy. Um, you, can, you can use the little notes or really just make your life a whole lot easier with programming with functions that you know, we already know how to do in JavaScript. So um, the next thing we're gonna talk about is envelopes. And it's what I was kind of getting at in the previous page. Um, envelopes allow you to play a particular note, but then also determine how loud you're going to attack it, um, what level you're going to sustain it at, how long you're going to sustain it at, and how long you're going to release it for. So um, the attack level is the, uh, sorry, the attack is how long it's going to take you to reach the attack level. The attack level is the amplitude of the sound when it's up there. DK is the amount of time it takes you to get down to the sustain level then sustain level of the amplitude, sustain is the length of the amplitude, and then release. So that's a whole lot of stuff to say. It sounds something like this. Was that quite loud? Should I turn that down a little bit? No? It was okay? Okay. So um, I wanna show you a graph, and you can find uh, the graph in the very special help menu down here, which is um, really wonderful. There's a, an extensive tutorial um, for how to do everything. It's got examples, library of synths effects, samples, and a glossary. Um, and the glossary is interesting because you can even do things like, you say they have, you can write your own tests. 
So if for some reason you wanted to test your music, it's very useful. Um, and in the tutorial, I want to show you the envelope's graph right here. So you can see exactly what that was. The attack, well, this is not exactly what I want. The attack level, then the decay, sustain, and release. So, synths and samples. Obviously, we're using one particular kind of sound here, or we have in these previous examples, but um, there are all sorts of other really cool electronic sounds that you can use. Now, you can use this Sonic Pi for all types of music. Most of the stuff that's been written thus far is electronic because it lends itself especially well to your Casio keyboard. But, um, so it has a lot of built-in things like samples. So these two samples together sound like this. Whoa, <laughs> super cool. But you don't just have to play those samples kind of independently of themselves. You can combine the samples with music. So we've got the sample, then rest. We've got some notes. Other sample, more rests, more notes. And this sounds like this. Yeah, epically cool space music. Um, one really cool feature that I want to talk about is looping. So we have all gotten stuck in a horrible, horrible while loop. Um, but here, in this particular program, while loops are not so bad. They actually make the music really interesting. This is um, where live DJing is a really, a, a really useful, um, it's a great thing that you can do specifically with looping. So all of a sudden, we don't hate loops anymore. It's amazing. Um, in this loop here, um, we are going to choose any particular note from in here. So you can see this choose is a function that is a conditional statement. Very cool. So, and then we've got our rests in between. So it sounds like this. And it will go on forever if you let it. <laughs> but we're not going to do that. So um, you can do loop forever. You can also choose to do a loop with a spe specific amount of time. So eight times do. Which sounds like this. So just eight beats. And if you'll notice, if you had written that in regular music, it would probably just be like eight different eighth notes. But this, in its way, in code, this is a lot simpler to write than on the previous page when we have this. Um, and we can also nest loops within loops. Shouldn't be surprising to anybody, but you can um, use samples in your loops. And within the loops, you can loop this one twice and loop this one four times. So it sounds something like this. <laughs> Very cool. So um, there are lots of other features that I've talked about briefly in the program. There are things like randomization and conditionals. Um, so like you can use if statements. If something, um, you can say uh, a note should be played roughly 50% of the time or something like that. So um, that ends up being really useful for things like chance music. In, um, in contemporary music, you get a lot of a musician just like being told to play these three notes five times within a 60 second span. And so you can achieve the same thing with this music without having to employ any musicians at all. Um, you can also write your own functions that you can use in a variety of different places if you so choose. There are variables that you can name. Um, there are lots of FX included in, here in the program aside from samples that are really useful. And like I said before, live coding, live DJing is probably the coolest thing with this program. I have to say, since I'm not a Ruby expert, um, the live coding is currently beyond me, but it is a stretch goal at some point to be able to play like eight bars of music and change it just once. So stretch goals. So I want to give you guys an example um, to listen to for what this would be. So here we've got uh, our synth sounds, and we've got some defaults for how we're going to use it. We've got our loop here. We've got some chords. And here we've got in thread do, and in thread do is a way for you to include a variety of different loops together. So you write one loop here, here, and here, and then they all play at the same time. Um, we've got some more of our chords, another in thread do, and a last in thread do here, and we've got some sweet heavy kick drums. So um, I'm sure some of you will recognize this song, but uh, please start to laugh as soon as you do recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I find it amusing too. 
We'll get to the end of the loop. There we go. So <laughs> that's the mystery song. Um, and um, yeah, I really encourage you, if you ever thought that music was a thing that you couldn't do because you couldn't play an instrument or you weren't a good singer, this makes music accessible to everyone, accessible to kids, to students, to anybody across the board, and everybody needs music in their lives. So thanks, everybody.